everybody, it's Sierra, the Artsy Badger, and today we're doing another creature creation video. It's been a long while since I've done one of these. I think it's been since Drawcember, but as usual, I went to animalgenerator.com, I think is what it's called, and I asked for three animals, and I got a springbok, marten, and a turtle. I specified red-eared slider turtle because the term turtle just seemed a little too broad for me. <laughs> and then I got to sketching. So when it comes to these creature creation videos, I think I've mentioned this in the past, but I face a little bit of a dilemma when I do these things. I think it's mostly trying to decide whether I wanna go like realistic creature or cute creature. In my head, I always want it to be cute, but for some reason, the like classically trained artist in me always ends up going realistic. Now I know that's kind of weird coming from me, but I used to pretty much draw exclusively realism and exclusively animals in realism. I'm definitely out of practice at this point, which I think is where my frustration lies, let alone the fact that these are made up creatures so I don't actually have a reference for them. But in the spirit of trying to achieve the look that I want, I tried to make this one cuter than I have in the past. And I focused less on making sure that each individual animal had equal parts in the creature and instead just tried to add little hints here and there so that maybe you wouldn't know right off the bat that that's what it was combined with. But when you're told, you can see it, if that makes sense. So because I'm aiming for cute rather than realistic, I decided to use the Martin as like the main base of the creature and then add little details here and there that reflect the other two. So like the Springbok is where I got the coloring inspiration as well as the horns. And then the turtle is kind of the feet and the, some of the coloring, like the stripes on the chest and as well as the red ears. Now I'm just experimenting with some poses, trying to narrow down what's the cutest possibility. And I actually really like these sketches. I kind of wish that I had made it smaller overall because I think that helps with the cute factor. But I'm trying to fill up the sketchbook. I could be doing it much faster than I am, but as you all know, I don't find that much time in my life to just sketch anymore. So I decided to do a pretty like slinky pose because I thought that that was cute. And I really wanted it to be facing forward because I think overall the Martins look a lot cuter from the front. I did mess up on the nose here. I believe I fix it a little bit later, but right now it looks a little bit too much like a lion or something. <laughs> it doesn't have a cute little petite nose. And I tried to make the eyes bigger to make it look a little more cartoony and cute. I think that part of my fascination and enjoyment from these creature creation videos comes from my enjoyment of Pokemon as a kid, as well as Avatar The Last Airbender. They do a lot of kind of hybrid versions or just slightly edited versions of animals that exist in the real world. And I just think that's such a fun way to come up with new creatures because that is definitely not one of my strong suits. I've always said that I'm not that creative of a person. I don't come up with things out of my brain just randomly. Everything kind of is sourced from something. So with these creature creation prompts, it allows me to push myself to try and come up with something completely original. 
I would love if you let me know down below how you guys would have combined these animals. And I haven't been that active on Instagram lately. I'm sorry, but if you do follow me there and you do decide to join in and draw your own, that would be really cool. I'd love to see what you come up with. So on the note of trying to make things cute, I decided to use this ballpoint pen that I just found on the ground when I was walking home one day. And a big part of the reason why I decided to use a ballpoint pen was because Dina Norland uses ballpoint pens a lot of the times in her sketches. And she takes creature creations to like a whole new level. Hers are always so cute and I'm always so inspired by them. And then always so sad that mine don't turn out as cute as hers. <laughs> But I thought that maybe her use of a ballpoint pen, giving it softer lines than my kind of fine liners, would maybe do the trick and help make it look a little softer and cuter and fuzzier. I don't know if it achieved it to the extent that I was hoping for, but I definitely like the way it looks. And every time I work with ballpoint pen, I always think like, man, I should be using this more often. So that's how I feel during this drawing session too. I should be using ballpoint pen more often in my sketchbook because it's really nice and satisfying and it feels slightly less committal than a fine liner for some reason. Even though it's pretty much equally as permanent as a fine liner, I think it's because a ballpoint pen is something that people use every day and so when you're using it you don't feel like scared that you're gonna mark something incorrectly, that kind of stuff. It also took me a while to decide how I wanted to color this creature, but again, kind of taking from Dean and Orland, I decided to use watercolor. It's just so easy and quick and fun. I don't know, I'm really enjoying watercolor right now. It's really pleasant to work with. I do think that I need to do more painting like with gouache, as I had said in the last video, because that was really, really therapeutic in a way, but I didn't feel like getting super technical with this one. I just wanted to kind of establish the colors, just making sure that everybody knew what animals were incorporated into this drawing via the colors. I tried to make its eyes like the turtle. I don't know if that reads that well, but turtles have that kind of bar through their eyes, at least the red-eared sliders do. So that's why its eyes look like that. And then I tried to make it kind of the murky green that a turtle has. I think it definitely could have been brighter green. It was kind of a mistake to put that yellow under color, but it's okay. It still looks fine. <laughs> Now, when it came to the coat, this took me some trial and error. I wanted the effect of kind of fading and darkening to the tips. And I think it looks fine. It doesn't really look like fur, I guess. Maybe it's because I was in a rush. Maybe it's because I don't know how to use watercolor. Who knows?
I also decided to give him some little green paws to kind of pay homage to the turtle part of him. His feet didn't end up looking super turtley, but the claws are definitely way longer than a Martin's claws. And then I attempted the lines on the chest. This part was kind of stressful because I didn't leave my sketch lines. I just kind of decided to wing it. I didn't really want too much line work on the pattern of it because I thought it would make it look less natural. So enjoy this real time speed of me struggling to paint some lines. <laughs> Another part of this that I struggled with was deciding whether or not I should bring the lines onto the tail. I ultimately decided no. Whether that was a good decision or not, you can be the judge of that. Now just adding those final touches, and that's it. I do think that I hit the cute factor a little bit more than I usually do. Still not quite where I want it to be, but I really enjoyed doing this creature creation video with you guys. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next week.